Hello, my name is Derek Kinder. I'm a hydraulic engineer with the Risk Management Center. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the reservoir routing model used in RMC RFA for the development of inflow volume based stage frequency curves. Let's get started. The objective of this lecture is to discuss the reservoir modeling theory in RMC RFA and methods for developing and entering a reservoir model into RMC RFA. A reservoir routing model is used to determine pool stages and discharges by routing a flood hydrograph through the reservoir pool and outlets. The reservoir routing model includes characteristics of the reservoir, such as the stage storage relationship and information about physical structures like spillways and other outlets. RMC RFA is based on the level pool routing method and continuity equation, which is discussed on the next slide. The reservoir model is used to calculate the peak stages for the stage frequency curve. Reservoir routing in RMC RFA is based on the level pool routing method, where the inflow minus the outflow is equal to the change in storage. Specifically, RMC RFA uses a finite difference approximation of the continuity equation called the modified poles routing method. The inputs to an RFA reservoir routing model include a stage storage discharge relationship. The reservoir routing capability in RMC RFA uses a simplified approach with a single stage storage discharge curve. Complex reservoir models are typically not needed for most projects when modeling extreme flood events. The surcharge operating schedule and maximum discharge capacity typically dominate peak stages for the extreme flood events. For small to medium sized flood events, discharges in the reservoir model can be adjusted to calibrate to the observed peak stages. There are four steps to entering a reservoir model into RMC RFA. The first step is to enter a name and a description. The second step is to enter the reservoir data into the table, which is the stage, storage, and discharge. Storage and discharge values must always increase with increasing stage. The third step is to enter in the reservoir features. Enter the stage for the top of dam, spillway, and inflow design flood. These reservoir features are used when plotting simulation results. Once all this has been entered, you should review the plots to verify they are correct. The default plot in the reservoir model is the stage storage relationship. If you right click within the plot, you can switch to the stage discharge plot. Once you have verified that these inputs are correct, you have completed the input of the reservoir model. More than one reservoir model can be created within a project, allowing the user to evaluate different operating assumptions and scenarios. For example, the user might create separate reservoir models with and without the use of regulating outlets to check sensitivity of peak stages for scenarios with the regulating gates operable and inoperable. Reservoir storage curves and discharge rating curves can typically be found in water management documents and design documents. Most projects have rating curves for spillway flow and outlet works. The stage versus storage relationship, also referred to as a stage storage function, relates water surface elevation to the volume of water stored. It provides a geometric description of the reservoir that is used during routing to determine the rise or fall of the water surface elevation, giving a change in volume of stored water. In most cases, a stage storage curve will be provided in the water management manuals or design reports. In some cases, stage area relationships are available, which can also be used to develop the stage storage relationship. It is important that the stage increments in the stage storage function are such that the critical reservoir elevations such as the spillway and the top of dam are adequately captured. The stage storage curve typically needs to be extrapolated above the top of dam to model potential overtopping events. RMC RFA does not extrapolate the stage storage curve during a simulation. The stage storage curve can be extrapolated using a terrain data set, such as a digital elevation model from the national elevation data set. This can be done using GIS software or tools available in HEC RAS. 
The highest known stage and storage value can be used as a starting point, and then the incremental increase in storage can be calculated for higher elevations and added to the starting value. The stage storage discharge function must be monotonically increasing, which means that both storage and discharge must increase with increasing values of stage. The stage versus discharge relationship, also referred to as a stage discharge function, relates water surface elevation to the total discharge associated with the outlet works, powerhouses, spillway, overtopping, and any other discharge facility. Stage discharge information can typically be found in the water management documents. The stage discharge relationship should include the total releases from the dam, including outlet works, spillways, and overtopping if necessary. Overtopping stages, storage, and discharges should be included in the relationship in order to properly model extreme flood events that result in overtopping. For additional details on stage storage discharge relationships, refer to an inflow volume based approach to estimating stage frequency curves for dams. Typical flood control dams are operated with consideration for downstream constraints to minimize flood damages. A dam might be operated in conjunction with other dams, which further complicates the releases. Check the water management procedures, review the guide curves, evaluate operations during previous flood events, and talk with the dam operators to assess how the dam is likely to be operated during flood events. Are the operating rules clear? Is there an emergency release schedule? When are spillway gates opened? Do regulating outlets remain open or are they closed? Every project will be unique. For flood control dams, we typically don't want to enter the maximum discharge capacity unless specifically required to by the operating rules. The dam will not be operated at maximum discharge capacity during the early to middle stages of a flood event. The releases during this time are typically at a minimum to minimize downstream flooding. Only when the reservoir stage approaches and exceeds the top of flood control pool will releases typically be increased significantly according to the emergency release schedule. The published stage discharge should always be checked. The curve will typically need to be extrapolated above the top of the dam to model potential overtopping events. Appropriate methods to calculate and extrapolate a stage discharge rating curve can be found in Engineer Manual 1110-2-1603 and EM 1110-2-1605. When extrapolating a stage discharge curve for a gated spillway, be sure to consider that the spillway gates will typically transition to an orifice flow condition above the design pool elevation. This limits the discharge capacity. Extrapolating the curve assuming free uncontrolled flow will typically overestimate the discharge resulting in an unconservative stage frequency curve. The plot on the left shows a validation and extrapolation for an uncontrolled spillway using the simple Weir equation. The plot on the right shows a validation and extrapolation of a gated spillway with orifice flow conditions assumed above the original design elevation. Again, it is important that the stage storage discharge function is extrapolated above the top of dam to include overtopping discharge estimates. A simple way to develop an overtopping discharge rating is to apply the Weir equation based on the top of dam elevation and length of the dam crest. If the dam crest elevation is not reasonably consistent over the crest length, or there are different dam sections with different elevations, then one can divide the crest into segments and calculate a discharge rating for each segment. The total overtopping discharge can then be calculated by summing all of the segments. An alternative method is to use a hydraulic model such as HEC-RAS to calculate an overtopping discharge rating curve based on a crest survey of the dam. The final stage storage discharge curve entered in RFA represents the total discharge and should be calculated as the sum of the regulating outlets, spillway, and overtopping discharges. Each dam is different with some projects having multiple regulating outlets and spillways. It is important to consider and include all sources of discharge that might come into play during flood events and how they might be operated. 
To summarize, let's take a quick look at how RFA will bring all the input analyses and reservoir model together for a simulation. Remember, RMC RFA follows an inflow volume based stochastic framework. First, RFA will sample an inflow volume frequency curve based on the distribution parameters and effective record length. Next, RFA will sample an inflow volume from the volume frequency curve. RFA will then sample an inflow hydrograph shape and scale the inflow hydrograph to match the sampled volume. The flood seasonality will then be used to sample a month for the flood event. The starting stage will be sampled based on the month of the flood and the corresponding starting stage duration curve. Now that RFA has generated an inflow hydrograph and a starting stage, the event can be routed through the dam using the reservoir model to obtain an estimate of the peak stage. This process is repeated many times to generate many sampled flood events and many calculated peak stages. These peak stages are used to develop the final stage frequency curve. You should now understand the reservoir modeling theory in RMC RFA and methods for developing and entering a reservoir model into RMC RFA.